next lecture that is on led structures and uh, with examples here so we are going to study the basic information about the structures and how the led is being generated here so these are my learning outcomes at end of this sessions students will be able to describe led structures so before starting to this so in the previous video we have seen the internal quantum efficiency and external quantum efficiency here so try to figure it out what is the difference between in those internal and external efficiency let us start with the led structure here so first one is the planar led here so in the planar led so in the previous video we have seen the lambertian distribution of the light here means what so whenever the light is going to be generated inside the cavity here so this light is going to incident on the ofc that is the optical fiber communication so when it is going to incident so at it will be considered as the planar surface here so the maximum amount of light will be on this the center position here as we move away from the center so it will be going to reduced by cos theta so that's why the planar led is not useful in the commercial application here most of the time so in dome shaped in dome shaped it is the in this manner here like this so the light is also incident on the center only as we go on, uh, on the away from the center the light will be reduced the intensity of light will be reduced here so these are used in the home applications most of the time it is used in the home application here so surface emitter led and the edge emitter leds will be considered on the basis of their geometry because so the planar and doped shape are not useful here because when we uh, want to send the data from the source to the fiber optical cable that is single mode or the multi mode cable here so most of the light should get uh, transmitted through that cable here and it should follow the total internal reflection but as we seen the geometry of a planar led and dome shaped led it is not useful in that manner here so for the transmission of the data for the longer distance uh, so surface emitter led and the edge emitter leds are used here and super luminescent led and this last one is what the resonant cavity and the quantum dot leds are there here so now we'll talk about the surface emitter and the edge emitter is that the geometry of this is the strip geometry as we going to generate in the lasers here because in the laser uh, what we have seen uh, it makes use of an the heterojunctions only so this is the heterojunctions now this is the he heterojunctions led here here you will be having so this is aluminum or uh, gallium arsenide and the gallium arsenide is sandwiched between the aluminum or gallium arsenide here okay so this is p p region and n region here this is known as the heterojunctions means heterojunction means it is the difference that uh, the material used for the sandwiching of this uh, active region will be two different materials will be there like in homo junctions there will be only one region here and as we seen this is the injection electrons and this is the holes here so for the led what we have seen uh, it consists of a spontaneous emission here for spontaneous emission means what so when we are going to have uh, as an e1 state here as e2 state here so more number of electrons will be at the e1 state initially so this number of electrons should be pumped uh, to the e2 state here means internal uh, con uh, means what we are going to do that is the pumping of electrons from one state to the another state here so when these electrons are going to come down after random amount of time here to become uh, into a stable state here so we are going to generate the light here so the light and some excess electrons will be non radiative elements as we have seen in the previous uh, lecture here so these are the injected electrons so while coming down it will emit the energy so you are going to have the indirect band gap here so this is the e g1 this will be eg2 here so two different band gap will be there so that more number of electrons will be there at the e2 state and while coming down your light is going to be 
generated here so that is known as a double heterojunction led for the generation of lasers as well as for the led we have to make use of the double heterojunctions only because homojunctions are not uh, used for the generation of an lasers and the led here because there will be not much uh, energy of the light is going to be emitted here so as we have seen when we are going to generate the light from the cavity inside the optical fiber here so the coupling of this power should be maximum here so that it depends on the numerical aperture numerical aperture is nothing but it is the light gathering capability means maximum number of light should get gathered here so at the acceptance cone here means you are going to incident the light in at an angle which is accepted cone here that is the theta a here so that is theta is nothing but uh, that is the numerical aperture here so it is calculated in number of ways here so now to understand this the uh, optical power coupled into the fiber here so we need to understand one example here so for that example we'll solve this example and then we can understand that uh, how much power is coupled into the fiber as we have seen in this example now okay see uh, as shown in this uh, example here that is dh is used here dh is nothing but that is double heterojunction surface emitter here so the type of uh, LED generator is the surface emitter which has the emission area of diameter 50 micrometers here. So here that is the given that is the diameter which is known as an 50 micrometer and but jointed to the an 80 micrometer core a step index fiber with a numerical aperture of 0.15 here. So NA is nothing but 0.15 okay. So the device has an radiance of that is R D okay so R which is given as a 30 omega S R raised to 1 centimeter square here okay at a constant operating driving current here. So what we have to uh, calculate here that is the optical power coupled into the fiber here if it is assumed if it is assumed that the Fresnel reflection coefficient at the index matched fiber surface is that is the Fresnel reflection coefficient is 0.01 here it is the 0.01 here so uh, for the surface emitter here if you want to calculate the power coupled into the fiber here the formula used that is PC equals to that is the pi 1 minus r okay a r d that is n a square here so this is the p optical power coupled formula here okay that is the pi 1 minus r a into r d n a here okay so for this before solving this a we need to calculate the value of an a so for calculation of an a so for this we need to calculate the value of an a here so which is given by pi r square here pi r square so pi here d is given that is 50 micrometer so it will be 25 into 10 raised to minus 4 okay so raised to 2 so which is being calculated as an 1.96 into minus 5 centimeter square here so 1.96 into 10 raised to minus 5 centimeter square here now you can put this value into this equation that is given by pc that is pi into 1 minus r r is nothing but it is the reflection uh, fresnel reflection coefficient here okay so thus what we are need to do so we need to substitute the value into pi 1 minus r a r d n a square okay so pi value you know that 1 minus 0 0.01 0 0.01 fresnel a we have calculated 1.96 into 10 raised to minus 5 okay r d is nothing but that is given by 
the 30 here the value of n this will be 30 okay and if you want to say uh, that is na which is given by na that is the na is given as an 0.15 here okay so if you solve this equation that is pi 1 minus 0.01 i have calculated the area radians that is the radians is given as a 30 watt and uh, 0.15 a square of an numerical aperture here so which comes to be an 41.1 micrometer here so this is the power coupled for the step indexed fiber here step indexed fiber here that is pc equals to 41.1 a micrometer here so around 41 micro uh, okay sorry micrometer not my watt here because it is in a power of watt here okay around 41.1 uh, micro watt of an optical power is coupled into the step index fiber here okay so this is for the uh, surface emitter not for the edge emitter so that will be having a different formula that we'll see in the next uh, video here okay so uh, this is the example what we have seen for the double heterojunction led for the uh, surface emitter led here okay so these are my references thank you